I think Nickel Creek are the kind of, of young musicians that, that don't come along very often. When I saw the band play uh, at the Ryman, it totally blew me away. The whole band was incredible. We're like siblings, pretty much. I mean, Sarah and I are siblings, but all three of us kind of feel like family. Their message is positive. They like positive music. We got the call that we were nominated for the Grammys. We were just, well, I know I was just bouncing off the walls. Because it was a passion in their lives, we made it a passion in ours to, to try and facilitate that. I think we all try and imitate God in some way, and in a healthy way, trying to create and trying to bring a piece of ourselves to somebody and go, this is, this is what I am. It was very important to us that they saw live music. We would all go Saturday night to this pizza place. We met the Thiele's at this pizza place that we used to go to when the kids were small. They called Bat Pizza Place in Carlsbad, California. And they listened to bluegrass every Saturday night for years, many years. A lot of musicians took the time to play with us and show us one-on-one -on -one things. And just sort of took us under their wing. And they didn't treat them like children. They were teaching them to be good musicians, regardless of their age. Chris and Sean got together in the hallway back behind the bathroom and started playing together. They actually would bring their mandolins to this event and they'd start to, to pick with one another a little bit in the, uh, in the hallway. This hall that led to the bathroom, which is the only place you could actually jam without disturbing the people who were watching the live bluegrass that was going on in the other room. So Sean and I would sit in there and just play fiddle tunes and Sarah started playing violin and would come and, uh, and so we'd play on stage there. Both of our families were really encouraging. They took us to all the musical events that they could, all the local festivals and the little bluegrass shows that were in the area. So we grew up not only playing together it, in the little gigs that we would get at the very beginning, but just seeing each other and competing against each other in the little contests and things like that and just hanging out. It started when I was uh, eight. Sarah was eight, Sean was 12. So we basically have grown up with each other. Yeah. In sixth grade, uh, we, we did this CD in which we had to leave every Friday and we'd record Friday night, Saturday, Sunday and drive home Sunday night and go to school during the week. And then we'd go up the next weekend because it was up in LA. I think that if they were in a regular school system, this wouldn't have happened because their uh, time would have been divided. Also, their attentions would have been much more divided. The teachers didn't really seem to appreciate the fact that we had to be gone during all of finals week and during the first couple weeks of school because that's when the festival season was. You know, the combination of being homeschooled and having time and then just my parents in encouraging that desire but not 
you know, not pushing it, not not trying to, to make it something that I didn't want it to be. They were just supporting the desire and not trying to manufacture it. We're competitive by nature, and that definitely goes into the band. I think it's, it's fun. Totally like, Sean and I, I think we, we try and outright each other. And, and, and I think we're always, like, in a, in a given song, you know, in an instrumental, like, Ode to a Butterfly or something, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to kick fox. some butt in your solo, yeah. or the fox. Individually, we're doing things that are completely different from Nickel Creek. Um, I play in kind of a, a swing jazz type of thing sometimes. Sean and I have been getting together with a lot of local musicians. Um, there's actually a pretty good jazz scene in San Diego. We do some local sessions and it's nice to uh, to have that as just sort of a little variety and split things up. It's more of a treat when we get together as a band now. I've been, I've been playing a lot with Dolly Parton and um, and I've been, I, I just recently played with my first symphony. It really brings you out of the element of Nickel Creek that we're in all the time and it, you know, personally, it forces me into an area that I wouldn't go musically. It's good to be able to get that out and, and, and then go back to Nickel Creek and go, okay, here we are as a family again. What sets great musicians apart from really good musicians is, is their open-mindedness. They're willing to not pigeonhole themselves musically just because they play bluegrass instruments. You know, they don't just say, I'm only going to sing the songs of Bill Monroe. They can equally be as inspired by Sean Colvin or Dave Matthews or whoever. And that open-mindedness gives them the ability to continue that sponge-like quality that they all have to just keep learning. Nickel Creek's music is... Uh... <laughs> Nickel Creek's music is a combination of what we've grown up listening to. And they've had a real interest and passion in Western music. All sorts, Celtic, pop, the better pop, um, jazz. Irish music, classical music. Chris and Sean have both written quite a bit of, of classical music. A lot of pop music, especially over the last two or three years as they grew up through being teenagers. The best music of of any number of these different genres is now creeping in and that's what Nickel Creek is. I grew up with a lot of, of Prairie Home Companion, the, the kind of storytelling kind of music, you know, like Pete Seeger. So what I really love right now about Nickel Creek is trying to make it sort of a sophisticated storytelling music, but then also musically back that story up with a, with a great um, arrangement. I think when we try to describe music, we right away are thinking about certain specific genres of music and the kids' music really, I think, transcends genres. I hope that Nickel Creek is, is a band comprised of three musicians who are striving to express themselves musically as a trio, in that everybody takes a role so that we can express whatever it is that we collectively agree upon. For me to describe their music, all I could say is that's Nickel Creek music. <laughs> Nickel Creek's music is just honest, it's pure. It's played with such a great focus that it's just inspiring to hear, you know? I mean, they can play seamless and perfect and all that, but because they're so great, they play it with tremendous amount of heart, tremendous amount of soul, and all those kinds of things that really set them apart. I am a lighthouse Warmed by the weather and the waves And I'll keep my lamp lit to warn the sailors on their ways And I'll tell the story I'll paint you a picture from my past When I was so happy But joy in this life seldom lasts ships at sea We had grown closer Death and joy meant everything to me and He was to marry A girl who shone away with beauty 
candlelight And they loved each other And with me watched the sunsets into night And the winds crashing around me And the sun slips out to sea And the winds that blow Remind me of what has been And what can never I remember after I saw the show, when Nickel Creek played, I thought, boy, I'd love to work with them. We'd never really worked with a producer as a band before. I guess a couple months later, we got a call and they were needing a producer for their first record on uh, Sugar Hill. And I was like, oh, yes. So I was thrilled. Allison grew up playing from a, a real young age, like us. And so, I mean, that was just another great reason to be working with her. She just felt like she was one of us. The most interesting thing I learned from Allison producing our album is, is that not everything that comes off live comes off on a CD in the same way. I think uh, the, the challenges with, with uh, producing uh, a young band that is so incredibly talented, uh, you know, you don't want to step in because they are so talented. This is what this is what they do, and this is what they sound like, and they have very definite ideas what they want to do. Allison brought a great vocal help to the band in the studio. We worked with layering vocals and uh, a couple little string parts, which we'd never done before as a band, so that was really fun. I had very definite ideas in toning things down for the CD uh, and, and not being so uh, exciting and, and flashy, and so you know we would kind of butt heads with that every now and then, but uh, I think uh, in the end, we, we all, we all agreed. When today I wish that I knew. Cause 
I started asking to play violin when I was four. I think my attraction to it is it, how similar it is to the voice. The mandolin has been kind of my source of self-expression since I picked it up when I, was, when I was five. I saw it first when I was two and fell in love with, with the instrument. It's so, it's, it's interesting. Everything about it is interesting to me. And it's, it's small and it's, it's got this high, this high tinkly sound that that really that I identified with, especially then as a as a little kid. There's a couple of things I really like about the guitar. One of them is that you can really feel the vibrations. Personally, you can. I mean, it's close to your body, and you can feel when you play chords. It kind of adds an, an extra element. I really like the emotion that you can uh, evoke with the guitar. It's a chordal instrument, you know, like piano, where the chord voicings become a very big part of it, and I, I'm really into that. When we were choosing the songs for this, um, they, had a, they had a bunch of material they had written, 
And, uh, you know, I think that's a huge part of the band. And, you know, they, 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 I asked them, you know, well, we probably could find another subject, like, like a love song. And, and they, were, they said, well, we don't know anything about that. So, uh, I mean, I, I love the honesty in it that they, they had to represent themselves correctly. Music is, is basically takes the place of relationships, I think, for all of us. I don't have a girlfriend, so yeah, this kind of takes the place of a girlfriend. It's, it's pretty. Uh, we're all pretty well committed to Nuku Creek. If they don't quit, I'm sure they're going to have a very long and wonderful career. Their foundation is solid. Their foundation is open-minded. Like I said earlier, they're gifted, you know, they're rare. Regardless of what happens to them career-wise as far as hit records or how many records they sell or if they're popular or if, you know, all that is kind of superfluous to me to a, to a really pure musician. They're playing out of their love and desire to, to be brilliant.